Today is my birthday, and for the first time in about 30 years, I'm actually working on this most important day. It's my third 21st birthday. You can do the maths. But some people think people my age are dinosaurs, yet people are still talking about dinosaurs hundreds of millions of years after an asteroid wiped them out by triggering real catastrophic climate changes. Today, though, is also an opportunity to reflect on a bloke born over two millennia ago in January, January 3, in fact, 106 BC, some 2,117 years ago. This bloke, Marcus Antilius Cicero, he was an orator and a politician, and he espoused such a contrarian narrative to the authority in post-Caesar Rome that the fabled Mark Anthony had Cicero beheaded at the age of... 63. It's enough to make th me think about pulling my head in, but I prefer sticking my neck out, always on principle. However, this fellow Cicero, he's been credited for hundreds of years now as the great philosopher and writer. His words, well, a lot of what we are now in the Western world actually came from what he wrote. Cicero's observations were rediscovered and celebrated at the time of the European Enlightenment, at the time of the great voyages of discovery like Lieutenant James Cook's scientific journey, which recorded the unique flora and fauna of our island continent. Cicero also inspired freedom-loving individuals in France, the colonies which became the United States, and by connection, the people of Ireland, which built new nations. You see, Cicero is actually credited with the renaissance of Latin as the structural base of so many languages, such as English, and Spanish, and Cicero may have lost his head when he was just 63, standing on principle to make the Roman Empire more inclusive and egalitarian. The, elite, the elites then didn't like such talk either. Uh, but his shadow and influence remains in our Western traditions, even if we don't realise it. Now, wouldn't it be something if the history of Cicero and others was actually taught in our schools? His philosophy and presence is in so much of our freedoms and institutions yeah, yet we ignore it. I, I think our younger generation should be offered such lessons, a new enlightenment, if you like, to trigger ambition and effort, just as it did in the 18th century Europe at the beginning of the great industrial revolution. You see, if our children were given the chance to learn more about the philosophy and wisdom of people like Cicero and countless notable people in history who, who were inspired by him, then maybe they too would be inspired. Our Western culture is being deliberately distorted, manipulated by those seeking to weaken us. Our certainty about who we are and the confidence we have should, uh, from this reality, be something that we should not be losing. The lefty revisionists, well, they say that we should be ashamed of our history and cultural development over millennia. Yet dozens of statues of Cicero have so far, well, they haven't been cancelled. Not yet. The decapitation of Cicero in 43 BC was an enforcement of the prevailing narratives of the elites in charge. The Roman Empire's decline followed much later, but it all sounds a bit familiar to the way in which our words today are being so codified as people rush to be offended on behalf of others. However, our values, egalitarianism, traditions and history have been embraced by so many from other cultural backgrounds because, you see, they're just so attractive. But having dumbed down learning, woke world types want us to further weak, be weakened by rejecting those values which have delivered such success for hundreds of years and weakened philosophically and ignoring the sacrifices over the centuries which built our society means that many are lacking the confidence needed to take on challenges which confront us now. And this bloke Cicero, he might have been dead for about 2,000 years, but his words still have power. For instance, he said, confidence is the feeling by which the mind embarks in great and honourable courses with a sure hope and trust in itself. Trust, certainty, confidence... They're all hallmarks which generate success. And I guess if you were Prime Minister today, surely this is what you'd want to encourage in the people who you are meant to serve, you know, basically to make Australia great again, if you like. Yet yeah, trust, certainty and confidence has been basically politically decapitated by process and division. We've been courted by this bizarre logic right now to divide us into racial groups, to treat us differently as some means to somehow or other unite us. It's bizarre. Equally... We offer no vision as to where we're actually going to be a generation from now. 
Ancient Rome built unity of purpose for its citizens and offered a promise to those who aspired to be of Rome. Ancient Rome also built more roads, bridges and water projects than we seem to do today. You see, Rome had a plan. We don't.